I'm Trudy Friend and I want to talk to you about the exciting media of watercolour. The first thing you need to do though is to get to know your colours and what they'll do when they're put on the paper. So try out some colour blocks. You'll find that colours like French ultramarine and raw sienna will produce a granulated effect. Other colours like Windsor blue or hooker's green will stain and you can't sponge them off so easily. The earth colours like raw umber or Indian red you will find you can sponge them off if you've put a mark and you want to erase it. Other colours are translucent and they can be put, are built up in layers of washes. They can also glaze and you will see that if I drag a gold across the bottom of a green it will glaze that green colour. Finally we have the opaque colours. They're the cadmiums, cadmium red and yellow. You'll find they are much more solid like body colours, like poster paints but you can do translucent washes with them. It's just that they are a little bit more opaque than the others. Stone walls rarely comprise of regular shapes and do look for the lovely textured surfaces. And the things to really use are the shadow shapes and the shadow lines between. One of the problems faced by artists is coping with the weather. And if it's getting very windy and cold or going to rain, just if you've got your camera with you, take a photograph of your subject. And you'll have it now to use in the studio and work out when you get home. I'm going to take a rougher paper because there's a natural texture on the rough paper that is going to help me achieve some of the surface textures and also I can make it really wet and drop in some colours and those colours are going to blend and create their own texture. A lot of happy accidents I hope. So I'm mixing up a very neutral colour. It's burnt umber with some ultramarine, French ultramarine blue with a little bit of yellow and with this colour I am drawing in with the brush the shapes. I'm looking at the photograph just to get an idea, but I'm not copying it. Now these are shadow shapes and shadow lines. That's a shadow shape, the wide one. A shadow line is where I lift the brush so that it's hardly touching the paper and it can sometimes even leave the paper completely, in which case we have a lost line. And when we lose the line, it can give us that impression of two stones being very close together so that they're not even causing a shadow. I'm just looking at some of the shapes on the photograph because it's much more interesting if you can take some things from nature. It gives you an angle that perhaps you wouldn't think of from your own imagination. And here I have an indentation where a bit of light has gone in to the recess. I'm going to pick up plenty of colour and I'm running it along and putting more pressure on the brush now and as it expands you'll see how the expansion robs it of colour and as I lift the brush it flows back and fills the reservoir and these reservoirs are what I keep moving and keep on the go so that I can eventually have these darks to work on. Now this reservoir here is going to help me, I can pull it down and create another shape that I can see here where there's a shadow line coming across here. All my pressure is undulating, press and lift so that I can get interesting shapes not just a straight line. And I've got another expansion here and that is a very tight pressure there so there's hardly any tone at all. Another little stone coming in here, a little bit more pressure along here and at the base of this thin stone we have again a large shadow shape. Doing it this way, it's a very natural looking arrangement of stones for a wall. You have to make it believable. You have to make it look as if one stone rests on another. It's no good making it like a jigsaw. That just wouldn't be what we see in nature. And this basically, just a final one coming down like that, can be the shape I'm going to work on to show you how to create texture on stonework. But first of all, I have to allow it to dry. Now that the paint has dried, I'm going to put my first wash on. 
and it's quite dark. I'm taking it from side to side, but I'm not just filling it in like a block. I'm trying to get the feel of the side of that piece of stone. And if there's the odd little piece of white, I'm going to leave that there. I now take some clean water on another brush and make sure that there's a globule at the end that I can gently touch against that wet surface. And I'm going to let that gently run down. And what it's doing is it's creating a cauliflower, which is something one normally doesn't want. But you can see that if I just remove some of the pigment and encourage it down into these shapes, you can see the dark shapes beginning to appear as a cauliflower. And if I was to add a dark behind it, it's going to go up into it as well. And I'm actually encouraging the lighter shapes to stand out against the darks. I can now draw in with a darker one along here, creating a crack. There are some cracks on the photograph. Now that's rather rich and dark. So if I do that on this one, I put the gold on first. and then go straight to the dark colour and start dropping the darker colours in. And they're going to spread across and expand. You can also take off colour, so you dry your brush and you actually press to get that lighter tone by removing some colour and you can draw into that with little shapes like cracks that you get in rocks. You can see how you can actually draw these hairline cracks in as a marbling effect on a surface. If you have an area that's very dark, you can add plenty of water and just move the pigment about a bit and then a little blot and build up your dark around it. This area here looks like one of those light marks you see on that sort of surface and you could enhance that by going around it and up to the edge here to get a nice crisp edge. I'm going to do a green effect. I'm going to bring it in on this one and again drop in some darks. Watch as they spread. Depending on the type of paper you use, you're going to get different effects. Some papers, the very rough ones, the mark that you drop in will actually spread along some of the rough texture and create that effect on its own. On this one, it's spreading smoothly. I'm now going to blot off for texture on this one. So I'm taking the dark across and screwing up a little bit of kitchen roll and just blotting it and then drawing into that with my uneven marks and a nice dark edge along there. And there are some of the cracks that you'd see along those stones. I'm now going to finish off the wall using a few different colours and the variety of textures. Dry stone walls are usually covered in quite a good deal of texture and they are fun to paint, so do have a go at them.